Hi everyone and welcome to my video on ricochet for beginners. Ricochet is something which I usually teach in the very first violin lesson I give somebody and to this day I cannot understand why this is not usually done because ricochet is not just our easiest bowing because the bow does almost everything on its own, it's a completely passive bowing. It's also a bowing which helps us so much get a feeling for how the bow works. Because when we play the violin, we play with the energy of the bow more than with the bow itself. The bow has a lot of energy on its own. We have the stick and we have tension on the hairs. And as most likely you've noticed, the bow bounces. That's one of the things which we deal with a lot when we first start playing the violin, is stopping the bow from bouncing. If you put your bow on the string in the upper half, it's going to bounce. So this bouncing of the bow is something which the bow does on its own. And the more we feel how the bow actually works, how this energy of the bow actually works, the better our bow technique will be even in the strokes which remain on the string because we just get to know our bow better. In the long run, if we play the violin for any length of time, the bow actually becomes something like an extension of our first finger of the right hand. And that's why it's so important to get used to working with the bow, get used to the mechanics of the bow, and get used to what does the bow do on its own. And I don't know anything better than ricochet to learn this. Think about the bow as you would think about a basketball if you were playing basketball. <laughs> Sounds a little bit funny for somebody like me who's so short to actually think, even think about playing basketball, but the principle is very similar because a basketball player plays with the energy of the ball and we play with the energy of the bow. The bow bounces just like a basketball, just smaller and it bounces on the string. The great thing is that ricochet is a lot of fun and you can start by just dropping the bow on the string and observing what it does. It bounces. You just drop it. You can't do anything incorrect. You're just supposed to observe what does the bow do. Now, if you move the bow in a down bow as you're dropping it, you will get sounds. You will get bounced notes. And that already is ricochet. So just by dropping it and moving a down bow, you get ricochet. You can already play ricochet. When you drop the bow, drop it about in the middle. Below the middle, the bow is too heavy. It won't bounce. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. So you drop it approximately in the middle and then you move the bow to the tip and you will notice that it bounces. It starts bouncing slower and then it bounces faster and faster and faster. Do this on all strings. You will notice that you can influence bouncing a little bit. For example, if you bounce very high and you take weight off of the stick by leaning your hand to your fourth finger, the bow bounces slower. If you lean your hand forward a little bit and apply a little bit of weight, the bow bounces faster. So once you get used to just allowing the bow to bounce, then you can start influencing it a little bit. If you find that your bow is not bouncing as long as mine is, but you only get a few bounces, likely you're stopping the bouncing because you're pressing down the stick. Pressing down the stick, leaning your hand forward to the first finger and pressing down the stick acts as a break to the ricochet. By pressing down the stick, I can immediately stop the ricochet. So if you feel your bow is not bouncing long enough, 
then that's because there's too much weight on the stick. If I want my bow to bounce for a long time, I literally lean my hand back to the fourth finger. Fourth finger carries all the weight. I can take my first finger off of the stick. That's how light the bow is. So what you can also do is you can practice ricochet without your first finger. Lift it and do the same thing. Most likely, you will then notice that your bow is bouncing longer. Then you can put your first finger back onto the stick and press down the stick after it's bounced a few times. And you will notice that acts as a break. It immediately stops. So play around with this because now we are already working with the balance of the hand, adding weight, taking weight away, adding weight, taking weight away. This is so important in violin playing because exactly this is what sound production is all about. So we're practicing this in ricochet and we're getting used to it because we get the immediate results of our change of balance of the right hand. So here you will already notice why practicing ricochet is so unbelievably valuable particularly for beginners. And the great thing is you can't really do anything wrong. It's a matter of experiencing what happens when you change the balance of your hand. So just playing around with it is going to give you so much information about how the bow works and you will feel the results of what you're doing with your right hand so much quicker and so much more distinctly than with any other bow technique. So. Play around with that a little bit. Practice ricochet without your first finger. You have hardly any weight on the string. That's why it bounces slowly. And then add the first finger. And then add the first finger and bring down the stick so that you break. That's the break. So Ricci always said the fourth finger is the gas pedal because that accelerates the ricochet. It doesn't really make it faster, but it gives you more ricochet. So the fourth finger, if you take the first finger off, fourth finger is the most important finger carrying the weight of the bow. That works as our gas pedal, as our means to be able to do the ricochet. And our first finger is the brake. That stops it. So that's how he explained it, when it's quite a nice way of thinking about it. So this is an excellent way to get used to this balance. The next step is to catch the ricochet after a certain amount of bounces. We catch the ricochet by changing direction. So we do the ricochet in the down bow and we change direction to the up bow and bring the bow off of the string. That's how we catch the ricochet. And the first step is to catch the ricochet after four bounces down bow the fifth note being the change of direction on the up bow. And a good way to start this is to do this without the first finger on the stick because the bow will be very light then and it will bounce slowly. That gives you a little bit of time. So you just do exactly what you did before. You drop the bow on the string, you let it bounce four times and then you catch it. It can help a little bit to be clear about the rhythmical pattern. We have four notes which are fast and the fifth is the end of the figure. So what we have is something like this. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That should be clear in your head before you start. That'll help you. So you take the finger off of the stick, first finger off, you drop the bow, and after the fourth bounce, you change direction and bring the bow over the string. One, two, three, four, five. Remember, the bow bounces on its own. You're not doing anything. You're just dropping the bow and allowing it to bounce. The only thing you're doing is dropping the bow and changing direction. The bounces in between, the bow does. Do this on all strings. first finger on the stick, the ricochet will be a little bit faster. That's all. Everything else is exactly the same. And then you do the 
same thing catching the rikushi after only three bounces on the down bow. This is a little bit of a different rhythmical pattern, so you need to feel that and hear it in your head first. It's three bounces and the fourth catches it, so it's... One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Again, start without the first finger so that you can do this slowly, or rather that the bow does it slowly. Remember, the bouncing is done by the bow. You're not doing anything, you're just dropping the bow. You allow it to bounce and then you catch it by changing direction. Remember, you need very good contact with your fourth finger for this. And then you do the same thing with the first finger on the stick. That just makes the whole thing faster. So these are some ideas of how you can go about practicing ricochet. It's a lot of fun. I always enjoyed ricochet. And you are noticing most likely that the balance here between first finger and fourth finger is what we're working with when we do ricochet. And that's what we need for all of our violin playing. So just sensitizing this is already a huge help. And you will most likely notice if you do this for a few weeks that all of your bow technique improves because you're just getting so much more used to the bow and how it works and the energy of the bow. I also always find it quite nice that when beginners spend so much practicing time stopping the bow from bouncing to actually give them an opportunity of working with the bouncing because we'll need that later on. And Ricochet is our easiest bow, and the bow does everything. All we do is drop the bow on the string and catch it again. That's all we do. And we play around with this so important balance of the right hand. I hope you enjoy practicing Ricochet. Of course, as always, let me know if you have any questions. And happy practicing. <laughs>